Hey Cajun family and welcome back. We first want to let y'all know that we made it through the tornadoes unscathed, but did end up with four and a half inches of rain. Just look at the water level compared to the barbed wire a few days ago. That's close to about a foot away from the bottom line. Now the water is actually touching that same line of wire. It is crazy how much it filled this pond back up. We did end up going about 14 hours without power, but at this point, that's pretty standard for us. Plus the garden got a really good shower and all the plants are starting to bloom. The days following the storms have been filled with intense winds, but that has been perfectly fine by us. It's making for some beautiful weather with the sun out and it's drying up all that heavy rainfall, which is exactly what we needed. Now y'all have seen a glimpse of what is to come. So y'all know we're fixing to get rid of these six by sixes and get this container welded down to the pipe. As y'all can tell, we have a whole lot of work to get done, starting with finding some plate that we can use to attach these two together. We're gonna to take some of that flat plate and make squares out of it. Then we're gonna cut a hole in it to slide over the top of this pipe. We're gonna weld the top of the pipe to the plate. And then we're gonna set the container down on top of it, get it into position, and then we're gonna weld that container to the plate. So we should have a good solid bond to this pipe all the way to where it's concreted in the ground. Yeah, and I think we all know who should be doing the welding on this project. Jim needed to go hook up the trailer to the buggy so that we could haul the torch up here, but in the meantime, Ladley and I came out here to show y'all the newest members of the Cajun Country Homestead. Y'all meet Jet and Skipper. They are three month old pygmy goats and they won't get much bigger than the size of Gus and they are actually gonna be our personal fence row mowers. <laughs> and uh, yes, this definitely was Jim's idea. Now, the one was Jim's idea, but I talked him into the two. When we use any type of heavy, expensive material like this, we are always really careful what pieces we use so we can get the most out of them and have a minimal amount of waste.
Introducing the SunJoy 11 by 13 foot outdoor patio domed two tier soft top gazebo, your ultimate outdoor sanctuary. Crafted by SunJoy, the world's leading ready to go assembly outdoor structure maker, this gazebo is your go-to gathering spot, shielding from sun and insects. And keep those pesky bugs at bay with the included mesh netting. 
With its vented two-tier roof, enjoy just the right amount of airflow while staying protected from severe weather. The sturdy structure ensures stability while the fade-resistant yarn dyed fabric and wood grain steel frame adds elegance to your backyard. Not only does it have the mesh setting, but it has a full coverage selection as well that you can actually open up from each side with this two-sided zipper. Transform your backyard into a summer-ready paradise with the Sunjoy Outdoor Gazebo. This is over 140 square feet, y'all, and we cannot wait to be able to use this this summer. So y'all, to get your hands on one of these Sunjoys, make sure to go down to the description below and at checkout, use our code CCL15 to get a discount off of your purchase. Thank you, Sunjoy, for sponsoring this video. We got all four pieces of plate, cut, test fit, ground, slicked up, ready to go, ready to weld. But before we get started, let's go back to the ultimate hoodies. Now look, I know there's a lot of word on the street that one of my welds broke. Now, I just want to clarify, it did not break in the well. It broke <laughs> in the pipe. It was a material issue. It was a jumbo. So everybody just pop the brakes. Calm down. Put your torch and pitchforks up. Can't help it. Magnetized pipe under extreme load. Hey, it happened. Hey, there's a whole welding class that watches us. So if that's the case, can y'all give a little explanation? Maybe your students can write some essays and send them into us and uh, explain why. Yeah. Explain why the pipe would just happen to break right next to Jim's well. But dig into metallurgy now before you do this. Let's talk <laughs> about let's talk about the carbon content. Let's talk about the temper of the steel. Let's include the magnetism. Let's get all that in there. So like I said, before you get the torch and the pitchforks, come on now. Y'all gotta cut me some slack. You know what really you did? Is you gave that class a learning lesson. That's what you did. That's exactly yeah. what you did. That was, yeah, no, this you know is what? what not to do. That was really nice of you. All that to go to say is Jim did all the prep work yesterday, so that means that I'm going to be doing majority of the welding today. Listen, so she's saying, I'm going to be doing most of the welding today because, honestly, she just wants y'all to feel good about this because, no. you know, she don't want the wells to be breaking. But I look at it like, hey, this is going to eventually be a storm shelter. You're taking all the responsibility. So if something happens, it ain't on Jimbo. <laughs> on a typical welding job, you have the welder and you have their helper. All I'm just saying is that you're just my helper. I'm going to tell you <laughs> straight to your face in cursive. Okay? I could fit for four welders, weld for four fitters. I am the all around metal unit. <laughs> oh, I knew that was going to get you. <laughs> now, we're going to be welding this plate relatively close to the concrete. Now, when we poured the concrete up next to the pipe, kind of had this kind of a thing going on. It's not really good for what we wanted to do, but I was able to take that buffing wheel and get some of that concrete knocked down, but it's still not going to be perfectly flat and level. So what we're going to have to do is, whenever Lydia goes to tack it, I'm going to hold it level, which is going to be some spots touching, some spots not, but that's okay. We just want this plate level. Now, in order for her to weld it, we have to attach the ground. We're going to use this railroad spike, put the ground clamp on here, and put a tack wheel right on the end. Over here, out of her way, but she'll have a good flow of electrical current. Should be more than she needs, you know, if she's capable of doing it. I don't know. Those I don't know, questions. but everything that you just described is that you're just helping. <laughs> I am helping. You know, I could be the helper, the laborer. I could go get water and Gatorade. I could go in the air conditioning. You can just shoot me a text whenever you feel like you need a little hydration. <laughs> and if I don't pan out, look at Gus. He's always eager to help. Look at this dude. I mean, sure, he looks calm and relaxed. I mean, but he is really a natural born killer. You should see what he can do to a canned biscuit. It ain't even funny. I mean, a half eaten sandwich? Oh, it's done for. Ain't that right, buddy? Yeah, kind of looks like a big old can of biscuits yeah, right now. That, that's okay. Just calm down. Calm down, old boy. <laughs> I know you're super excited. <laughs> So what are you doing? Are you putting on an FR shirt? Safety first here hey, at this OSHA approved project. There is nothing wrong with putting on all the appropriate PPE, but I'm just going to say this. If you're going to go to the trouble of putting on an FR shirt, why not put something over those legs? <laughs> it's the perks of having your own OSHA approved safety regulations on your property. <laughs>
You know, you did a really good job on that. That really yeah. looked good. How's my helmet hair? <laughs> and now for a recap. Lydia has all of the plates welded onto the pipe. And now the container's ready to get sat down on these pieces of plate that's welded to the pipe, that's concreted through the slab, that's concreted into the ground, so forth, so on. See where we're going with that? But. You should write a book. I know. They have something like that already. But. Poetry. Uh, what is the name of that? The Woman Ate the Fly, maybe? Yeah. I think. Anyway. The Alligator Ate the Fly? <laughs> There's a piece of pipe concreted in the ground. <laughs> All right. So now what we're going to do is, is we're going to make the first critical lift with old Big Red. Now, we haven't lifted anything very, very heavy with it yet. This is going to be putting it to the test. Now, this container does need to be sat down and moved over or moved over and sat down but it's still really wet around here. And we have the sides of this slab built up with dirt and crushed concrete to finish it up. So I'm afraid if we pick it up and we try to move it one way or the other and the tractor starts spinning, we're gonna rut all this pretty work that we worked so hard up to do. So what we're gonna try to do is pick it up, set it down on those plates, then take the tractor with the chain and just pull it where it needs to go. Don't that sound simple? Unless it hangs up on one of the little pipe stubs, you know, and then we had to get the come along on it and pull it over that way. But I still think we can do it. I think we can get it done. It doesn't have to go that far either. It needs to move over a total of... Just inches. Yeah, I was going to say, like, this side I think is like three inches at max. And this side's maybe, maybe two inches. So, it, like Jim said, it really does not have to go very far. So, fingers crossed that this is an easier process. And I will say this, because it is on this hard slab, I do think it's going to be a lot easier. The end opposite of the doors. The end on the west side, I'm predicting it's going to be fairly easy because it's a lot of surface area underneath there to get the forks under. It's going to be easy to get it out from underneath there. Now, the other end is not the case. So, when we set the forks down, the forks are going to hit the slab. So, then we're going to have to back the tractor out from under it. And what I'm hoping it doesn't do is bind up on those forks and then try to pull the whole container back. We might have to tie my truck on that end with a chain or something and pull the tractor out from under. I don't really know how we're going to get that done. We do have two jacks. We do. Now we purchased these jacks for this, but I didn't measure the width. So. Okay, and might we add that how many ton is this container? Four like okay. over four tons. It's like four and a half tons. Uh, like four and, and some change. And that jack is like a three ton jack. But we but, have two of them. Is that really how that works? It's exactly how that works. Okay. Well. Jimbo man. So Jim's fixing to pull the tractor up on the end that we just finished up on. He's going to pick it up, and I'm going to go ahead and pull out these six by sixes that we have it sitting on right now, and then we'll attach the chain and hope for the best. So we're going to have to move these in. I measured these. These are like 44 and some change wide, and that opening is 40 inches. Okay. So I think if we just move it in, the same distance, kind of keep the load in the middle.
My goodness. That ain't no step for a stender. <laughs> oh, Red, the big Red has had worse on his lip and never quit whistling. <laughs> I am telling you. Okay, I'm glad that we did go with that 75 horse. That's all that we really needed. That's perfect. It was perfect size, plenty strong. Man, that thing, I'm telling you, it's a powerhouse. It's a powerhouse. Exactly what we needed. I, you had such a good idea to buy that thing. Okay, it's not that I ever doubted that the tractor would be able to move the containers. It's just, I really thought that that was gonna be a lot harder than it was gonna be. We have it sitting on the concrete now. So now all we have to do is just do the fine tuning, you know, just kind of tweak it around, get it perfectly centered, get it measured against where this other container is gonna be welded to the slab and welded out. Just as simple as that. I mean, this was such an easy project, no thought. No planning, no nothing going into it. Just willy nilly jumping out here and throwing it together. So we're fixing to measure this about, I don't know. 87,000. <laughs> yeah, till dark tonight. So we're going to save you all the trouble of that. We're just going to be moving it around, getting it lined up just perfect. That way we can finish welding it out like Jim said. And then y'all, it's going to be time to move the second container. Aren't you happy you're going to get to spend the rest of the evening on the come off? Little inch here, a little half inch there, a little three thirty seconds over there. Well, one thing about it, whenever we get it and it's welded in place, we've got it. All right, Cajun family, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and we will see you all in the next one.